Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We continue our study in the morning. We're over in the fifth chapter of Matthew, talking about the Beatitudes, if you've been with us. And we're down to the fourth verse there. It says, Blessed are they that mourn. And of course, the result of our mourning shall be comforting for us. And so I talked a little bit about that yesterday, about the comfort that we can have. But if, the question that we closed with yesterday, if you were with us, is what hinders us from mourning? What, what keeps me from feeling bad, I guess, if you want to use that term, for the sin in my life? And uh, so I got about uh, four, four, four or five things here. I don't know. We'll see what we've got. It says, uh, the love of sin. People get into a condition of despair, not believing that God can help them because he's given up on them. They get, but they, they can't let go of their sin. They, this, they, they love that sin. And so those are the things, you know, I believe that what happens in life a lot of times when we get saved, okay, we, we're born again and we're on fire for the Lord. And uh, all of a sudden, over a period of time, some of those things that we like to do so well that we're so involved with before we got saved, those temptations start coming back into our life and sometimes they can cause a problem with us. So he says that we, we get all, all worked up, we get all grieved uh, because we can't give them up and uh, he kind of gives up on God. And see, this is, it can bring confusion and doubt into your life. Conceit, trying to hide sin so there's nothing to mourn over. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, Hey, you can sin, I sin, and other people don't even know it. You, know, you, can, you can have something in your heart. You can have unforgiveness in your heart. You can have lust in your heart. You can have things in your heart. And the only two people that know about it is you and God. And so what you do, you just you, you try to hide it. You don't allow anybody to know about it. So therefore, there's no reason to mourn over it. Nobody else knows about it anyway. Presumption. Presumption is a form of pride. It, it, it's a person that realizes the need for grace, but not much grace. Okay, I need some forgiveness, but not a whole lot. Uh, I have sin in my life. You have sin in your life. But my sins, and your, you know, they're not bad enough. I don't have to confess my sins. I don't have to go to God. He says over in 1 John 1, 9, we got that uh, down here that we can look at. He says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But, you know, uh, that, that sin's not really bad enough. I don't, there's no need to, God knows about it. And so, really, there's no need to confess it. But, uh and again, there's, there's no need to repent of it either if it's not that bad. See, uh, there's no pardon, there's no forgiveness for someone who won't turn away from their sin. You can take, we take that verse, uh, 1 John 1, 9, and we quote that a lot, and people quote it a lot, you know, if I confess my sin, but you, what we don't remember or we don't understand is the fact that with that verse, when I confess my sin, I'm agreeing with God that I am sinning, but also I have the idea of repentance. I'm turning from that sin. I don't want to do that sin. I'm, I'm, I'm burdened because of that sin. I'm mourning, if you would, because of that sin. I'm going to turn away from it. So if, if you're not going to forsake that sin, it's not, and it's not saying you'll never do it again. It's not saying that you'll never. But if your attitude is, I, I'm just going to ask for forgiveness today, but I know tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing, then you better check out and make sure you think that you're going to confess the sin that God's talked about in a way that's going to restore fellowship. The relationship is solid. The relationship between the sinner and God is solid through Jesus Christ. But that fellowship is a fluid thing. It goes uh, in and out. It can be great today and terrible tomorrow, depending on how we're living this life as a Christian. Okay? So it says, uh, no pardon for someone who refuses to break the sin. And there's procrastination. Okay? You know, we can, we can be doing things that we know are wrong. But it, it happens over a period of time. And so I, I know that I should stop doing it. Uh, you may be getting into a, a relationship and, you know, it's, it started pretty innocent and it's, it's going the wrong direction, it's going the wrong, it's getting deeper and deeper, more serious, more serious. But you just don't understand, you just don't look at it like that. You know, it's, it's not that bad. And so without taking a hard look at it and understanding you need to get away from it, uh, sometimes I use the idea that people see see how close they can get to the fire without getting burned. You know, how, how far can I go before I commit, before I go too far? Where is the borderline? Well, if you're under that impression, you've already gone too far. You know, you're, you're already going the wrong direction. Once you recognize that you're drifting, that you're going the wrong way, you need to be uh, broken because of it. You need to understand, you know what? I'm not pleasing God. And uh, we, want, we do want to please God. It's not for our salvation. It's an evidence of our salvation. 
it's because we're a child of God that we want to please Him. So the idea is that we want to uh, be uh, sincere about our sin, we want to be uh, repentant of our sin, and we want to try to have victory over sin. And that's the process of sanctification as we go through this life. We want to be more and more separated from sin. And we have the right attitude towards sin. And I don't want to tell you, it's, there's the world, the flesh, and the devil. I always refer to those three. The world, the flesh, and the devil are a constant war against the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Uh, there's a constant war going on. So you and I, we need to stick into the Word of God. We need to keep our prayer life up so we can have victory over that. The study of God's Word will help us understand how repulsive our sin is to God. I don't think we can truly understand God's holiness. I don't think we can really have an understanding about how great God's repulsiveness is towards sin. It's an abomination. He tells us that over in uh, Proverbs chapter 6. It's an abomination of God. Uh, David, after he was had his affair with Bathsheba and the killer had Uriah killed and all those things, and he was confronted by Nathan the prophet in Psalm 51 3. He says, I acknowledge, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And David in Psalm 51 is really laying his heart out. He says, God, you know, don't take your spirit away from me. You know, forgive me of my He goes in. He's broken because of what his sin. He recognizes how bad it was in God's eyes. And so then he turns from it and he wrote that Psalm 51. So uh, when we study God's Word, when we pray, just talk to the Lord about our sin. When you see sin in your life, and again, those things, and it's uh, you just lay it out before the Lord. I know sometimes we sin, we don't even recognize it as sin. Uh, and other times, we just pass over it. But when we see sin in our life, and we need to deal with it, and we need to, to push it away, we need to turn away from it. And the last thing I want to look at is, Godly mourning is a reflection of acknowledging how destructive sin is in our life. And so I look over in uh, Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6. He says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bringing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So if you show so in tears, if sin is truly a burden to you, if sin is something that is you know really bothers you, really upsets you, uh, really messes with your walk with the Lord, you need to deal with it. And you, again, we get back over to 1 John 1, 9, and, and that's for Christians, it's not for unbelievers. If you're going to you can try to apply it to that if you would, if you want to, but basically he's talking about believers here, as John is writing. And he says, you know, if we confess it, but we have to have, again, the idea of repentance. You have to have the right attitude towards sin in your life. And, you know, to be honest, not too many of us really hate sin like we should. Not too many of us are, have the great desire to live that, that uh, purified life, that that sinless life, we can't get to that, I know that, but we can try to sin less as we go through this life. We want to grow in our faith. We want to grow in our understanding of God's Word. So we do that then through the study of His Word and through praying, and again, back to the study of God's Word, that the holiness of God, you realize how it means, the holiness of God, that He's completely separated from sin. We, we're working at that. We've been taken out of the bondage for sin. You know, but we're in the presence of sin. There's a day coming when, when we won't even be in the presence of sin. We've been delivered from it. And we're in the, the power and the presence of sin today, but there's a day coming when that'll all be past. All right. But you need to know Christ as your Savior. All these things I'm talking about don't mean anything if you're not a Christian. If you're not born again, born into the family of God, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. What's that mean? You must be born into the family of God. And how, do you do, how do you do that? You repent, you turn from the world, you turn to God and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to pay for your sin. That's how you become a Christian. It's the only way to become a Christian. The Bible tells us if you believe, you can be, you're born again. If you don't believe, you're condemned. Condem condemnation is only raised when you put your faith in Christ. So do that today. You don't know that you have another day. You don't know that you have another hour. The day is the day. This is the time to repent. With your faith in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for loving us and we just pray that our light is a our life is a light in this dark world, Lord. And you tell us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and, and glorify you where you're at in heaven. So Father, we just pray that we would be found faithful in that way, Lord. And for those that don't know Christ, we pray truly this would be the day, Lord, that you would touch them, open our heart, open our eyes, and let them see the truth and put your faith in Christ. We thank you for loving us, and we thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.